South Florida real estate has finally slowed down a bit, folks. We went from an extreme frenzy, a frenzy that hasn't been seen in probably 16, 17, 18 years. And this has been ongoing since the start of COVID back in 2020. Finally, finally, we're going from just a frenzied market to a hot market. Anthony Lamacchia here, broker owner of Lamacchia Realty, and I am happy to be here talking to you about South Florida real estate to provide you with a extensive mid-year market update. That's what I'm here to do. I want to talk to you about what's going on all over South Florida, what's going on with sales, what's going on with sale prices, what we're seeing with buyer behavior, what we're seeing with seller behavior. And truth be told, it's pretty similar to what we're seeing around the country. What I find interesting is the slowdown. And when I say the slowdown, I want to be very clear with everyone. I'm talking about frenzy down to just hot market, okay? Frenzy to hot, not hot to cold. So please understand that when I'm explaining. This, this slowdown, this deceleration, this decrease in market activity and amount of buyers that we're seeing started around pretty much the whole country in about March. We did not see early signs of it until about mid-May in South Florida. And now it's very clear that South Florida is like the rest of the country and it's decelerating back down to pre-pandemic levels of real estate activity. That is what we're seeing and that's what we are expecting to see from here on out. And I wanna talk about what that means for buyers, what that means for sellers, so that you can make decisions moving forward on what exactly you want to do, whether it be buy, sell, rent, or whatever it may be. So let's jump into some of our reports. Our marketing team did a fantastic job putting together our South Florida mid-year report. Uh, we released this late last week. And if you look at it, it's a similar trend to what we're seeing up here in New England as well. Home sales are down 9.9%, call it 10%, okay? So this is the amount of sales, this is not prices. Last year, South Florida, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County, all three counties, we saw 60,000 homes sold. This year, as of June 30th, first six months, the mid-year point, we, are, we have 54,000 homes sold. Average price, though, is up about 11, almost 12%. Very interesting to see similar numbers up here in New England. I happen to be sitting in New England right now, so I'm saying up here, but I'm in South Florida quite often. Now you look at homes listed. The amount of homes listed is down 4%. That number was actually more pronounced three or four months ago because the first quarter started off very slowly across the country and in South Florida where a lot less people home um, a lot less people listed their homes in the winter because they didn't know where they were going to go because of the fact that inventory was so excessively low. The peak, don't be confused by these words, the peak of the low inventory, the peak of the frenzy was this past January and February. So the sellers that listed at that time, you made out best, even early March. The sellers that are listing now, you're not making out quite as well as you would have then. But when you buy, you will do better than you would have done then. So I just want to point these numbers out. 4%, that was higher before, but it's catching up. More and more people are listing. In addition, let's look at homes pending. Homes pending down 18%. What does that tell me for the months to come? Homes pending down 18 Home sales up here down 10%. That tells me that we're going to see a increase, um, no, 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 I should word it this way, a further decrease in the amount of homes sold. Doesn't shock me. Home sales were up dramatically last year. And now what we're seeing is it slow back down to earth and that's totally okay. Uh, let's see, just like I talked about home sales decrease, single families down 14%. Uh, so they're down a little bit more and there was a run on single families, keep in mind, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic because people didn't want to be involved in shared living. They wanted to be able to um, live in a place where they'd have their, their own land. They wouldn't walk out their door and run into people. And that's why we saw such a run on single families. Take a look at this trend of single family homes sold since the beginning of the year. In January, single family homes sold was up, but then it started slowing. Look at this, February, 
So really, even before interest rates went up as much as they did, it started slowing a little bit. And at that time, it was because there was less to choose from. If you look here, condos sales down 6%. So those have slowed less than single families. It, it makes total sense. Beginning of the pandemic, we saw a run on single families. Eight months in, people started coming back to condos. Then in the last year, condos have soared because a lot of single families became out of touch. Uh, their pricing got out of touch for many buyers. It, it's the, the patterns and the behaviors that we see of consumers are so predictable and so interesting to us. Now this here is the amount of total properties sold by month. You can see up in January, up in February, Hang on, I got to make sure I'm reading this correctly. Up in March, that's because of the condos. Then down, down, down. That's all. And, I, and, and here's what I expect. When you look at pending sales for the first six months, you are going, that tell, being down 18%, sorry, too many thoughts at once, that tells me sales are going to be down more in the months to come. Not shocking at all. As I said, price is up 11%. Let's move further down here. We don't need to review every detail of this. Now, how does this, how, what is happening to the amount of inventory? Everyone has been complaining about inventory and feeling as if there is not enough homes for sale. You are right. There hasn't been because it has been eaten up. It's like the Pac-Man effect. Buyers eat up the amount of homes for sale. Now take a look at this. This is the red line. This is every month since the beginning of the year, well, back four years, right? Look what's happening. Each year, the total amount of homes for sale has gone down. 2022 is in red. Now it's going up. Now it's going up and it's crossing. By the time we get to the end of the year, you're going to see the amount of homes for sale be higher than it was at the end of 2020. Mark my words, that's where we're headed. This is a good thing, home buyers. This is what you were waiting for. You were dying for this. You wanted more choices. You wanted to be able to have a home inspection. You wanted to be able to have contingencies in your offer. You are getting back to being able to do that. So this here is, let's see, Fort Lauderdale and, oh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale and West Palm. And uh, single families. And then you look here, this is condos. So look, condos hasn't quite caught up yet. This is a very interesting graph. Single families, they're back over last year's level, which is historic here, folks, because we've been on about an eight-year trend of inventory being lower than the year before um, for about eight years across the country, maybe with an anomaly month here or there, but for the most part, that's been the case. Now you look here, condos haven't quite climbed above last year's level. By the time we get to the end of the year, it will be competing with 2020, mark my words. Predictions for the rest of the year, I went into everything here. I'm going to bring you back to this in a minute. Let me come back to full screen. Here's what I expect to happen, folks. I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to take you to 2021 just to show you how much sales were up, okay, um, last year. And then we will uh, end it from there. But what I want to talk to you about is what I expect in the months to come. What we are going to see is a further deceleration. We're going to see sales slow down a bit more. When you hear that, don't take it out of context. I don't want uh, people to snippet only certain things that I say, okay? It is impossible for home sales to stay at the level they were at. We had a complete uber frenzy going on, people fighting over homes, values going up dramatically. And I'm going to show you that when I show you the 2021 report in a minute. So we're going to see sales slow more. I don't expect prices to fall this year. A uh, number of people have asked me, will they fall next year? As of right now, I would say it is doubtful in South Florida. There are some areas of the country up here in the Northeast that I think it's possible that we could see home prices decrease. I think it's doubtful in Florida. The big advantage that folks have in Florida is Florida has become a major attraction across the country because of the tax laws, the economy, the freedoms, things like that are drawing people into Florida. And that's why Florida is seeing such a run on people moving down there. I um, viewed a bunch of luxury condos in South Florida, some of which haven't even been built. Ground hasn't even been broken on some down in Miami. Uh, one of them was Lofty. The other one was Vita. The other one was Ashton Martin. They're all being listed by our friends at 
uh, Severo Real Estate. And we went and viewed these with a handful of brokers last month. And what was amazing to me was they were all 60 to 85% sold out. Some of them ground hasn't even broken. I mean, the amount of people headed to Florida is just incredible. It's incredible. And that is a big advantage for all of you in Florida. If you're a homeowner in Florida and you're trying to decide what to do, um, you know, you really ought to think about the fact that prices are pretty strong. I don't expect them to fall out. You want to sell? Sell. Don't have to try to time it. I would tell you this. I doubt prices will be up much in a year. They might be up, but I don't think they're going to be up substantially in a year. The run that we just saw over the last two years is behind us now. Someday, I'm sure we'll see another run like that. But that was historic. That was the busiest it's been since 04, 05. And some folks feel that it was even busier than that. So just keep those things in mind. If you're a seller, don't try to time it. You want to sell, sell. But, but. Don't be cocky with your price. Don't overdo it. If you overdo it with your price, you are going to end up in a situation where you're going to have a hard time selling. And um, right now we're about at the end in South Florida. We are about at the end of sellers getting away with overpricing. So if you see a whole bunch of comparative properties in your neighborhood that were selling in the 800s, list your home at 799 and watch what happens. You will attract droves of buyers. You will be able to negotiate in a multiple offer situation, and you will have tremendous leverage. Keep that in mind. It's not just the price. It's the leverage. Buyer is much less likely to cause you problems in a negotiation when they know there's several other buyers in line right behind them to buy your property. So keep that in mind. Don't overdo it. Price a little bit on the lower side. Buyers, let me talk to you for a moment. This is not 2008. It is not. 2008, the amount of the mortgages that were written in the years leading up to that, um, including in Florida, were lots of 100% financing, lots of low money down, lots of people buying that couldn't afford homes. We have none of that, zero going on in the last three years. So we're seeing a real estate deceleration. We're seeing an adjustment. We're seeing what you hoped for, home buyers. You wanted this, okay? Don't overplay your hand. You go see a property that's listed, I'll use the same number, 800,000. And all the properties in the neighborhood are selling around 800, you should offer 800. Okay, you can't be getting crazy and offering 600. You will not get it. And if you need to learn the hard way, go ahead, you will see. Okay, the market right now is a better market to buy a home than it was six months ago. Rates are up. I expect them to go up more. I expect um, them to stay high for a couple of years while inflation comes down. You can refinance your way out of a high rate at some point down the line. I shouldn't say a high rate, a higher rate than you would have had two years ago or a year ago or eight months ago. But you cannot refinance your way out of $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 over asking price. Keep that in mind. Be happy. Embrace it. Take advantage of it. But don't overplay your hand or you will not land a property. Now, let's take a peek. For those of you diehards that really want to review data, I'm going to take you back to 2021 for just a minute because I want to show you um, what it was like that last year and how much sales were up and how much prices were up. This is Fort Lauderdale. Let's see if I can find. Okay, we'll, we'll take a peek at it. This is not all of South Florida. It's just Fort Lauderdale. But just take a look at this, folks. Home sales last year in 2021 over 20, up 37%. Prices up 36%. Okay, these are crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. This goes to show you just what an incredible frenzy there was. So sales coming down 10, 12% still doesn't have things back to normal. It doesn't. Prices, as I said, I expect them to stay somewhat flat. Take a look at prices here. Home sales up 51% and 28% in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, this, these are amazing numbers. This is, again, I want to repeat so no one takes what I'm saying out of context. This is back 2021 over 20. I'm just pointing that out because the naysayers and the people that love to go in the media and say, oh, housing's going to crash, prices are going to come down, a lot of you said that in the summer of 2018, and I said that was not going to happen, and I'm saying it again now. 
I do not expect prices to go down in Florida. Um, I might change my tune in 60 or 90 days, but as of right now, I don't seeing that, see that. Even if they slid back a little, folks, they went up 50%. Even if they slid back a little, that wouldn't be a bad thing. If you're a buyer, embrace this. Be happy, okay? So to recap, because I went over a lot of numbers there. Let me jump back in here. I want to recap with you for a moment and just quickly look at our mid-year report one more time. Right here, look at this. These are the biggest things you pay attention to. Sales down 10%, prices up 12%. Look at this. Homes pending down 18%. That tells me sales are going to fall further. Okay, they're going to decrease further. Inventory, single families now over last year. Folks, those are the indicators. That tells us what is to come. That tells us what is on the way. And what is on the way is a good, strong housing market, robust housing market. And in South Florida, we are particularly lucky, folks, because everyone wants to be there. That concludes my mid-year 2021 update. I hope that helped you if you are a buyer, a seller, or a realtor. Think about what I said. Watch it again if necessary. Share it with your friends and family. And that's all, folks. Lamakia Lamakia Realty and Lamakia Luxury. Enjoy being in South Florida. Thank you.